Hey there, I thought I would make another video about sound and how it works. And this is kind of inspired <laughs> by a video I watched this morning uh, from a channel that I'm subscribed to. And the question that the person was asked to answer was how sound goes through a wall. Like for example, you're listening to your stereo in your room, you leave the room, but you can still hear it in another room. And in particular, you can hear the bass. So there's, there are two ways to look at this and only one of them is right. <laughs> but the usual way that people describe what's going on is they say that the sound is going through the air and then it meets an object and it makes that object vibrate and then that in turn in turn makes the air vibrate on the other side of it and that might seem like what's going on but the fundamental problem with that type of mechanical transfer is the impedance losses that you'll get with something like that. Now it's not going to be immediately apparent with a wall because the wall is big and thick usually and you know you're going to lose some sound through there anyway right. So you're going to say okay there's the impedance loss right there. So you need to kind of understand what impedance loss means as well. So take your speaker for example. Speakers are not very efficient. And the reason why they're not very efficient is that impedance loss. You have your speaker cone that is pumping energy into the air. And that is not a very efficient transfer method from the mechanical movement of the cone to the medium that is the air. So you have quite a loss there. So if sound is going through a wall by that mechanism, first of all, you're losing uh, so much because the air is trying to transfer that energy into the wall so that it can make it move. So that's the first impedance loss. And then on the other side of the wall, that transfer from the wall itself vibrating to the air around it. That's not exactly how this works. Okay, that's, that's, I think that's kind of the standard explanation. And that's the explanation that I got from that video that I watched this morning. It's actually a little bit, well, quite a bit different from that, in that the sound, depending on the wavelength of the sound, will either go through an object or it will reflect. So, a while back, I did another video showing how you can put your sound damping material that you put inside a speaker, if you want to use fiberglass or rock wool, which I recommend because they're great damping materials, you can put those in a plastic bag and the sound will still go right through them. Now, the reason why that is, is that the plastic doesn't provide enough of a barrier for the force of the sound to go through. And that's, a, that's especially true for low frequency sound. If you have a sheet of plastic, what you have to look at is, okay, I'll make an analogy here. I'll make an example here. And I'll take my range in my kitchen. All right, now it's got a, a control panel on the front and you can press the buttons on it to set the temperature. And the way that works is that there's a button behind that sheet of plastic. Now the plastic is there for protection. It protects the button. It also gives you a easy to clean surface. But I can take my finger and I can press on the surface of the plastic, the thin plastic, and I can activate the button. Now if you take a piece of steel, a sheet of steel, the same thickness or even thinner for that matter, and put it on top of it, you're not going to be able to press the button. Or if you can press the button, you're going to have to push really frigging hard to press that button. That's because that steel is more of a barrier. It's stiffer. It's repelling my finger. 
okay? So you take your average wall in a house, like I'll use my workshop here for an ex as an example. You got drywall, studs, some insulation in the walls, plywood on the outside, that type of thing. That doesn't really provide much of a barrier for a low base to go right through. And what I mean by low base going right through is that let's go back to the example of the airspace in your room as a big block of jello that when you put sound in it, it starts to jiggle. Okay. So imagine the wall is a jelly bean right in the middle of the jello and the jello is jiggling. What's what's happening to the jelly bean? It's being, it's being jiggled with the rest of the jello. So what's happening is it's conforming to the sound wave. It's moving with the sound wave. It's not transferring the energy like from before and after it's actually moving with it. So the sound in, is in fact, just going right through it. The higher frequency sound is reflecting back. The low frequency sound is passing through it very much like the force of my finger was passing through the plastic to touch the button behind. So that's the way you have to look at that. That's the mechanism there. There's no transfer, like there's no tag team thing or relay race, you know, where you go up and you tag off to the wall, the wall takes it from there and then it tags off to there on the other side of the wall. It's not happening like that. As far as the low frequency sound goes, the wall doesn't exist. Or if the wall's there, it's just moving it along with it. It's jiggling it in its big mass of jello. Now that we know how the sound of your stereo <laughs> is bugging your neighbor through his wall, let's talk about some new music. I got Steely Dan. This is the very best of Steely Dan, another compilation which, like I said before, I don't have a problem doing this because it's got all the stuff that I like on here and uh, everything's done well. Like there's no compromise with these things. Now I did have, um, I had a total of three Steely Dan CDs. I never did have Steely Dan on cassette. I kind of came to them a little bit late. Okay. You know, I was listening to Hey 19 on the radio when I was a kid, but, uh, and it, I loved it. Okay, but I never did get any Steel of Dan music until around the 80s. And then I got some CDs. And this is the only one I got left. The other two I, uh, I sold in the garage sale. <laughs> All right, so Countdown Ecstasy is the only one left that got left. <clears throat> but this covers everything else. Like I had Asia and I had Gaucho as well. But everything that was good on both of those is on here. So yeah. And remember these videos, well, these segments of the videos are talking about the kind of music that I like to listen to. Okay. So the next thing is Donald Fagan, the Nightfly. And <clears throat> this is another one that was big um, during the 80s. Um, a couple of standout tracks on here. IGY, I think that's International Geophysical Year. Sounds kind of hippy dippy, but uh, great song, great tune. And New Frontier, that was both of these were all over the radio in the 80s. And um, I picked this one up because I didn't have anything from him. And I, I could remember those songs, but then I didn't have this CD. So I got that. So yeah, and then I should mention that Donald Fagan was part of Steely Dan. So yeah, good stuff.